Happy Sabbath to each one of you. As the world celebrates the Christmas Eve, we the Seventh-day Adventists who do not believe the 25th of December is the birthday of Jesus, but we believe that he was born one day. And that's the reason why we would like to join the other churches in celebrating this wonderful birth of Christ, the hope that he gave each one of us. Could you have imagined that wonderful day when the stars shined so bright, when the moon was at its peak of brightness, in a little manger, there was a little boy called Jesus Christ who was born. He was the one who is the answer to all our questions. He was the one who came to give that hope for each one of us. Do you believe that he was born? If you do not believe, listen to us this evening. Maybe somewhere down the line, it will hit your heart so hard that you will believe that hope was born. That hope was born that you and I could have an eternal life. The hope was born that you and I could stay with God for eternity. The hope was born that when I die, I will rise again to see the Lord if I am in the true spirit of God. This evening, as the, the members of our church present to you different songs, we would like you to look at those words and feel the words that have been said. The words that come out may touch your heart. The words would mean a lot to you if you could only understand that God came down to this earth to die for you and for me. That you and I could see him through eternity. Let's keep that hope in our hearts. Let's keep that hope alive because hope is all that we have. Shall we pray? God of heaven, thank you, O Lord, for giving us that hope that we could live on this earth. We especially would like to thank you, O Lord, this evening for giving us a privilege where through our songs we could portray the love that you have bestowed upon us. We can portray that wonderful hope that was given to us that we could see you in eternity when you shall come the second time. When we die on this earth, we would die with that hope that you have died on that wonderful cross, shed your blood, that we could have that eternal life, that we could have that hope of living with you forever and ever. Bless us, Lord, as we go through this program. Take care of us, bless us, guide us, protect us, and lead us as we come to the end of another year and as we soon will be ushered into the new year, that you would be our only hope, you will be our only guide, and you will be the only one who will redeem us from this sinful world. Bless us, guide us, and protect us throughout the rest of this evening and the days to come. Amen. On a day in real history, in a real city, in the real world, God himself came to take away all guilt, to fulfill all hopes, and to defeat all enemies and make us safe and satisfied forever. This was a day planned in eternity before the creation of the world. Shepherds, wise men, came to give glory to God. They departed never the same again. Indeed, the whole universe, with untold light years of space and billions of galaxies, was created and made glorious for this day and what it means for human history.
What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap sleeping? Whom angels breathe with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keep. Such mean estate where walks and ass are feeding. Good Christians fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the The name of the maiden was Mary. The Hebrew form of the name is Miriam and means bitter mare. Why she was given this name, I do not know, save that the Jews had the custom of naming children from the circumstances of the birth. Now the time when Christ should come was one of the utter bitterness and extreme poverty for the Jews. Among the downtrodden people, she was one of the lowliest. Not a maid of high station in the capital city, but daughter of a plain man in a small town. But despite all these conditions, she labored. She labored with love, labored for the Savior, the Savior of the world.
Hope was born. Key text is taken from Colossian chapter 1 verse 21 to 27. Our text is taken from the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Colossians at the point where Paul quotes and reflects upon a hymn familiar to the Christians of Colossae. The hymn tells a wonderful story. Christ, the visible image of an invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. the head of the church made peace through the blood of his cross made saints out of aliens and enemies and died to make a wicked fold holy this is the gospel this is the good news that god charged paul to preach in its fullness what is the background to the name of christ background anointed smearing of oil represents contact point between humanity and divinity came to us as unwelcome visitor born in a manger lived with oppressed poor but went about doing good things he was a worthy model moral and spiritual perfection ethical teachings miracles of healing and deliverance wisdom and character chose death so that we could choose life buried and rose again Christ principle of faith a person of history Christ in new internalization of this divine principle within human personality 
emphasis is on Christ in you. When Christ is revealed openly among you, he will be seen what you do in what you say and in how you interact with others. What is Christ in you? A Christ among you, he is true to everyone in you, in him, in her. Christ did not come as a Jew to Jews. Christ did not come as Africans to Africans. Christ did not come as white to whites. Christ did come as, as an anointed one of God came. Yes, he came, but he came to all nations, to all colors, to all races, to all classes, and to both genders. Be Christ in you, God's way of taking me by surprise. When I'm sick, when I'm failing in schoolwork, when I'm jobless, when everything turns against me, he always surprises me by taking me through at the time I do not expect him to do it. Indeed, Christ is revealed in me. What is the hope of glory? Hope is, hope is anticipated blessing, God's guarantee that God's presence will be revealed in all its power and splendor. Hope is confidence. If faith is the substance of our hope, then hope is the essence of our faith. It takes faith to sustain hope. Faith without hope is pointless. You can hope to anticipate any ordinary thing. You can hope to pass your interview. You can hope a soccer club to beat. You can hope it won't rain tomorrow. You can hope the hope of Christ looks for the revelation of God in presence and power. The be the hope of glory is not content with human possibilities. It claims the divine impossibilities, is not satisfied with human potentials, pushes for realization and fulfillment of divine promises, is never bogged down in human tragedy. It translates us from tragedy to triumph. It looks for God to keep on taking us by surprise. It produces His image in us. Friends, let us not allow the tragedy of despair rob us of our hope. If Christ is in you, you will see on the surface of these deep waters the reflection of Jesus. Conclusion, the hope of glory tunes us up, shows us how to look up instead of down, sets our sights on a vision of God's goodness. Illustrations, dying 89-year-old who said at his deathbed, I see angels, I see Jesus, I see New Jerusalem, I see glory. Like Abraham, he looked for a city without foundations whose builder and maker is God. Look like Moses, he looked for the Red Sea of slavery to be transformed into the dry land of deliverance, a path that could cross over into the canon of freedom. Like Hannah, she looked to God in prayer for the children pouring out their souls with tears, lending their little one to the Lord. Like Paul, he looked for signs of hope, signs of glory in their songs and prayers and sermons and testimonies of Christ. Christ in you is the hope of glory and the hope of glory will elevate your present to the higher plane of faith and witness. Christ can transform the lives of people like you and like me. As a part of the body of Christ, this is your ministry, this is your assignment to demonstrate the reality of Christ in you. The hope of glory was born for everyone. Splendor filled up the sky 
it's the same that a good and the wise man revered when hope was born this night. Out upon the snowy fields, there's a silent peace that heals, and it echoes the ways of our Savior's embrace because hope was born this night. Glory to God in the highest, Some may suspect we are souring the brightness and joy of Christmas when we sing Nails, spears shall pierce in through. Can't we leave that for Good Friday? Let us have a nice little cuddly baby Jesus at Christmas. No nails, no blood, no death, no thank you. But the word made flesh, coming without a cross in view, is no good news. The light and joy of Christmas are hollow at best, and even horrifying, if we sever the link between Bethlehem and Golgotha. The cross he bore for me, for you, this time he comes not in judgment, but mercy. He did this for you. Christmas is for you only because his life is for you, and his death is for you and his triumphant resurrection on the other side is for you. Nails, spears shall pierce him through. Doesn't ruin Christmas. It gives the season its power.
It's not just about the manger where the baby lay. It's not all about the angels who sang for him that day. It's not all about the shepherds or the bright and shining star. It's not all about the wise men who travel from afar. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. It's not all about the good things in this life I've done. It's not all about the treasures or the trophies that I've won. It's not all about the righteousness that I find within. It's all about His precious blood that saved me from my sin. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone. It's about the cross, it's about my sin, it's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the sun, it's a tree, it's about how every drop of blood that flowed from him when it should have been me. It's about the storm. Hope was born 3,000 years ago. Through the singing and the message that we have just heard, I believe that you and your family have been blessed. I would like to thank all the singers, the technicians and all the participants who have made this program a success. And we send our blessings and prayers from our church to your place. Shall we all close our eyes for prayer? Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this wonderful Sabbath. We thank you for the songs that we have heard and the message that has come from your servant. We believe that hope was born for a reason and it was born for each one of us. May we open our hearts and accept this hope who is Jesus Christ. May we, may we all be reminded of his love and His grace. May be with each person who is uh, joining us this Sabbath. May you bless their families as we uh, enter a new year in a few days' time. 
May you send your blessings to be with us. May we recommit our soul, our heart to you, that we may see Jesus truly for who he is. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.